It's Pyram King with another detailed video guide. This time it's to the update to the Fey Quest for Foundry in V10. I've made some huge changes there for the ritual, uh, some stuff with Monk's Active Tile Trigger. So if you're into Foundry and you're interested in the Fey Quest, this is the video to watch. Now, before I get started, huge shout out to my legendary supporters. I have over a hundred legendary supporters. I'm really excited. I was nervous in the beginning of the year in January, 2023. I left Patreon, migrated to Kofi. I've had over 900 supporters, over 100 legendary supporters. Couldn't thank you enough because it's your support that makes all of this content possible. The video guides, uh, the PDF guides, voice acting sound files in the Foundry Adventure Modules. Now supporters, including legendary supporters, get access to the entire Foundry Adventure Library. If you're interested in becoming a supporter, there's a link in the description down below. Now let's jump into this. We're gonna be discussing the three Fey rituals uh, the combat encounters and everything, showing you how to do this in the new released version 10 uh, Fey Quest. Now, if you're not familiar with the Fey Quest, let me just give you the kind of the nutshell, nickel dime elevator pitch tour of it. The Fey Quest is an epic quest for Curse of Strahd that provides some important elements, I feel. First of all, it gives the characters in your party a reason and a purpose to visit several locations. Number two, it provides some lore and history to some information that might just seem at odds. For instance, there's the three stone circles, one behind the bone grinder, one in the swamps of Berez, and there's one on Yester Hill. So it, it fills in the lore of what those are and who created them and why. It also fills in the information about the Fey gem. There's obviously one of the gems uh, at the uh, uh, Wizards of Wine, the green gem. Well, the Fey Quest wraps all of that up. And what the Fey Quest is, is the players need to locate all three of those gems, go to the three shrines, restore the Fey and through a ritual. And by restoring the Fey, the Fey give them some gifts, some magical, powerful gifts, and tell the players how to permanently kill Strahd, permanently kill Strahd, to lift the, the, the mist from Barovia forever, become Heroes Barovia, and return Barovia to its once beautiful splendor in which the beautiful three Fey had overseen all of Barovia. That's in essence what the Fey Quest is. Now, if you're interested in more details about it, the Fey Quest is available absolutely for free in a beautiful PDF guide edited by Jesse Winter at Dual Storytelling with some gorgeous token art by Tisu. All of that's for free in a link in the description to the free PDF guide. Now, if you're interested in the additional content, including the Foundry Adventure Module, you can need to become a member. And it's a special thank you gift to all the donating members. I take all the stuff from the free PDF guide, including DM Andy's free battle maps. I put them into a Foundry Adventure Module. I do all the walls, lighting, sound, everything, including the Monk's Active Tile Triggers, so you don't have to. As a special thank you for supporting this epic project. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's jump into it. We're gonna be looking at some DM Andy's. These are the free maps, 4K version. However, if you'd like the 8K version of these maps or with different weather effects, night and day, or spooky or ghostly effects, they're all available over on DM Andy's Patreon page. I'll put a link in the description down below. Now, this is the first of the stone circles. This is the force phase stone circle. Let me just get in there real quick. And when the players get to the stone circle, they're gonna notice there's a little bit of a problem. We've got the, the, the four monolith stones sticking up, but in the center, there's a huge boulder that's blocking the entrance to an underground temple. And the players are gonna to have to figure out how to move this boulder. Now it's really up to you. This is some fun role-playing creative problem solving. It could be a strength check. It could be some rope and some leverage. Uh, the players could commandeer a local horse and a wagon to try to pull this huge stone massive ball to, to open up the entrance to the, the, the secret chamber down below, or perhaps they have some magic. Well, the players are gonna to have to figure this out, but what happens in the battle map is you, as the DM, have these buttons over on the side, these blue buttons. So once the players figure out how to move the boulder, the DM, you, are gonna double click on move boulder and watch the boulder over here. I double click, the boulder moves, and you see this arrow uh, pop up. Now this arrow represents a teleportation on the map that will take them 
into the chamber down below the, 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 the mount with the stone circle on it. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that. I'll just grab one of these bullywogs here to demonstrate a character. So once the, the characters are here, the boulder's moved and this arrow, down arrow, shows that if the players step into the down arrow, that'll teleport them down as if they're cr crawling down into the hole into the temple down below. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. My, my little bullywog character goes there and boom, there he is. He's popped up down here. The up arrow, by the way, returns you back to the surface like you're crawling up out of the hole uh, in, out of the, uh, the temple below. So now we're in the temple down below and the characters, uh, they have to venture through this temple here. And when they get in here, they're going to place the green gem um, up here on the altar. And as soon as they do, they're going to begin the ritual. Now, if you follow in the guide, the free PDF guide, the players are going to have to figure out which poem they're going to have to read. There's a poem as part of the ritual. They're going to have to bring a tribute and place the green gem there. It takes six rounds to complete the ritual to restore the Fae and to bring her back. So when the players start the ritual, you're going to click the ritual button here. And it's going to start playing some music. And the green gem is going to start glowing. This is when you're going to be rolling initiative because what happens is as soon as they start the ritual, a fey hound appears. Here's the fey hound. Now the fey hound is going to go after the person that's doing the ritual. One character needs to be, you know, reciting that poem and, and there with the gem cannot be interrupted. Otherwise that round doesn't count. So their players are going to have to deal with this fey hound. The fey hound has paralyzing breath and visibility and a bite. So they're going to be dealing with this. It has 50 feet of movement as, as you're trying to restore the fey. Now, if the, the players in the party are managed to, to, to kill off the Fey Hound, all good. But if not, if they're able to keep that Fey Hound away, on the end of the, that sixth round, you're going to double click the Fey Arrival. And when the Fey arrives, any beast, any creatures, any monsters around will be destroyed or will run away when she appears. And so you double click this, and all of a sudden the music changes. The whole temple lights up with some magic. And there she is. She appears. This fey hound, he runs away in fear. Bop. Bye. He's gone. And there she is. Uh, there's some text for this. I'll show you here. When she arrives, you can read about uh, her appearance. And she says, you know, pretty much, thank you for bringing back, restoring me. Here's some secrets about Strahd. Here's a gift she, she imparts with them. Uh, some powers to the Fae staff. The Fae staff here now can do 1d6 hit points of healing, uh, which uh, can heal uh, uh, up to six creatures within 60 feet, restores 1d6 uh, hit points once per day. So it's it's a powerful staff. So she, she, she gives them this power of the Fae staff. Now, that's really amazing. Now, if you notice outside, some magic lights have have uh, started twinkling out there. And that's the Fae, uh, and she is using her magic to get rid of all the stuff that the hags had done to this site. This is the, the stone circle next to the bone grinder, and the hags have been putting some some teeth up there of the children's teeth and some effigies and some skulls, you know, because they've been worshiping some nasty creature. And so she's using her magic to clean up the site. Now, if you want to reset this uh, this thing, all you have to do is just double click on the Fey Arrival. That'll turn off the lights, hit stop. That'll stop any of the music playing. And then you just double click the reset button and that moves the stone back over and turns off the, the portal. Uh, you're gonna have to manually uh, delete um, the Fey though, unfortunately. Manually delete her and any other characters that you don't want in the scene and you're ready to go to start up again. So it's pretty quick, easy to reset and start. Now let's go to the next one. We're going to do the Mountain Fae next. So we're going to go to the Mountain Fae scene. And here we are at the Mountain Fae scene. Let me get rid of, there's some tokens on the map. Let me get rid of those tokens. Boop. Now this is the same map uh, that Diamandi created for Yester Hill without the giant Wicker Man or Winter Splinter. And when the players find the red gem, which, by the way, is hidden uh, in the Amber Temple, and they have to go through a crazy, crazy adventures to get that red gem, they come back to Yester Hill to restore the Mountain Fey. And when they come up here, they come up to this, the, uh, within the stone circle over here, 
there's some glyphs on the ground. They're going to lift that up. They're going to place the red gem along with the tribute and begin reading the poem. And just like before, you're going to click ritual to begin the process. Here we go. So we're here. The, the, the red gem is starting to glow and the ritual started. Now, again, it's going to take six rounds. That one player needs to recite the poem. The poem takes six rounds to recite, uh, to go through that. What I would do, just to, as an example for some role playing to make this, this fun, is the player on his turn that's reciting the poem. I think this poem might be 12 lines. Yes, this is by uh, Emily Bronze. This is uh, Loud Without the Wind Was Roaring. So maybe on their turn, they recite two lines from the poem. Loud without the wind was roaring through thy autumn sky. That's their turn, right? So they can't be interrupted when they're reading this ritual poem to restore the Fae. Now, as soon as they start the ritual in round one, what you're going to do is you're going to have an attack of the undead druids rising up. So you're going to notice that there's all these grave sites. See these grave sites up here on the... Uh, on the plateau. You can hear the wind blowing up there. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to click wave one and watch what happens. This is pretty cool. I really like this. What was that? So coming up out of the ground, actually these don't because these are kind of spiritual. The other ones come up out of the ground. They all of a sudden there's this kind of red glow about the grave sites and the Druid Possessors come up. Now the Druid Possessors, these guys are nasty. Three of them materialize. They're gonna start moving in towards the person who's doing the ritual. Remember, if that person takes any damage or is interrupted, that round of the ritual doesn't count. They're gonna have to repeat that round again. Now the Druid Possessors are just, they're nasty, right? They've got uh, possession, withering touch, uh, and incorporal movement. Now that possession is, by the way, on a charge. I think it's, uh, let me take a look at it. I think it recharges on a six. Yeah, it recharges on a six. But that possession goes down, things are gonna get bad for the party. So they, it's a, a recharge on a six, so that's not too bad. Then they've got that withering touch as well. So those druid, uh, druid possessors are gonna start flocking towards the party that are doing, and especially the character that's doing that ritual. Then, at wave two, it comes up on round two. So round two, you get, again. So this is round two. Three more undead approach. But these three undead are different. These are the druid undead uh, whites. And they have a vicious glaive, and they have a life drain. They have a multi-attack. So they have a life drain, which is just nasty, and a vicious glade. They can do uh, two multi-attacks. They also have withering touch, but they're sunlight sensitive. So the other ones are kind of like uh, uh, ethereal, like ghost kind of spirity things, where these are actually more like zombies, kind of coming up out of the ground. They're gonna be more physical to deal with. The other ones have some resistances, a lot of damage resistance, uh, as if they're ghosts, they can't be grappled, but these can. And these do are sunlight sensitive. So you got these two different creatures coming out. Now, at the beginning of round three, you got the final wave, and that's the rest of them coming up. We'll just do that right, really quick here. So look at that, you got one, two, three, four, five, six more popping up. This is a combination of both the Possessor and the White uh, coming up, and they're all gonna flock towards that player that's trying to do the ritual as the other players are trying to keep these back. Now, on the sixth round, if the player is not uninterrupted, but the, the, the creatures still are still moving in on them, you're going to do the Fey arrival, right? You finish the ritual, the Fey arrives, the Mountain Fey arrives, and here we go. And there she is, there's the Mountain Fae. Now what you saw is when she comes the Mountain Fae, she has the special ability, uh, a legendary ability here, uh, called the Mountain Quake. And what that does is 
is she just sends this, the whole top of the mountain starts quaking. That's what that special effect and sound was. And the, all these undead druids, they just, they, the whites just fall to the ground and they, the, all the flesh falls from their body and their bones turn to dust. And the, the spiritual ones, the ones that are like ghosts, they kind of just vaporize. And so she gets rid of all of them. And then she goes through the process of restoring the player's health. And again, there's the entire uh, thing you can read right here. She has her fey appears. She has some stuff of what she says to the player. She restores their health. By the way, the big reveal to the players is when she materializes, she reveals she was Madame Ava. The mountain fey is Madame Ava. It's, it's so cool. Players won't know that. It's like, oh my God, it's Madame Ava. She comes back. She was really the mountain fey. That's the reason that Madame Ava is helping us. Is she just wants the fey restored because she is one of the fey to finally defeat Strahd. Now, she gives you the staff. Again, you have here, she has mountain resistance. So on the same staff, she touches the staff. She imbues the fey staff with magic that gives the uh, the targeted creatures for the next 10 minutes 1d6 hit points. So six creatures within the 60 feet range gets 1d6 temporary hit points for each fey that's consecrated. So now if you've consecrated two fey's, it's 2d6 temporary hit points. If you get all three fey's, it's 3d6 temporary hit points can only be used once a day. So as you can see, this staff is becoming more and more powerful. The, the, the Force Fae uses a healing ability, right? So it can heal up to 3d6 once per day for every single creature up to six in a 60 foot radius for the party. It's super powerful. Here, now the Fae staff can also, once per day, if you get restore all three, three of the uh, Fae, 3d6 temporary hit points, so cool. But I mean, this is powerful magic, but that's, to get these gems, to restore these phase, it's not going to be an easy task. Getting that green gem, getting this red gem, and then eventually getting the blue gem. This is this is epic type level quest stuff that you've got to do. So, to 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 stop this, just double click the stop button. Turns off the music. Just highlight all the creatures in here. Hit delete, and you can just restart. Just hit the ritual when they start. Fay arrives. She kind of shatters the ground ah! you know all the undead disappear she materializes boom and you're good to go okay we'll stop that now we're gonna go to the last one which i really like and that's the the swamp fey here now the swamp fey in legends barovia is baba lazaga so whether you defeat Baba Lazaga or not, she will still materialize. If you defeat her, she's defeated as Baba Lazaga. Her spirit still lingers and you can still restore her as the Fae. But she is Baba Lazaga. So here, you're in the middle of the swamp. This is in the swamps of Berez. And you find the stone circle in the swamp. You can hear kind of the swamp music right now. And you place that blue gem in the center. Uh, there's a little stone pillar there in the middle. You, get, you found the, the, the poem to restore her. You've brought the tribute and you start the ritual. You can see the blue, st the, the blue gem is starting to glow now in the process of this ritual. Again, take six rounds. Players got to recite that poem. Each one has a different poem. This one here is by Alfred Tennyson. So again, you can have them read two, two or three lines of the poem on their turn. You know, have them role play it. I come from haunts of Coot and Hearn. I make a sudden sally and sparkle out among the fern. That would be their turn, their six second turn, you know. And and the and then the creatures come. I'm gonna show you which creatures come. In this one, of course, the the Bullywog. There's a village of the Bullywog, if you haven't seen that module in the map that DMM Andy put together, it's awesome. The Bullywog are creatures that the Baba Lazaga created who worship Baba Lazaga as the Swamp Fae. So the Bullywog regularly come here and they bring like, you know, maybe some dead frogs or stuff they find in the swamp and they they pray to the Swamp Fae who is Baba Lazaga. So the Bullywog show up as you're doing the ritual. And here's wave one. You can hear them coming. Ready? Here we go. So the bullywogs start showing up. You can hear them making their noises. That's the bullywog noises. One of them is going to be uh, a croaker, and he has this feature called the rule rulegog, 
and he, he'll make this noise. Blah! And this noise, actually, what this does is it, it gives, for all the uh, fellow Bullywogs around him, gives him 10 temporary hit points. However, that noise also calls forth, like, I need some help. He's calling forth other Bullywogs. So at the start of the next round, you're going to hit wave two and... Like you're coming out of the swamp, more Bullywogs are coming. And then, of course, in round three, you get the last huge wave of them coming. They come up from the south. And with the, with the last one, you've got that Bullywog Royal, right? This is the the kind of the, the king badass of the Bullywogs, right? He's got the spear multi-attack, the croak decree that's on a charge. Uh, each ally of the royal that's within 60 feet can hear has advantage on their first attack roll on the next turn. So, I mean, they're going to kind of congregate around him. He's going to do the crook decree. They're going to get that advantage on their attack roll. So, he, you know, they're going to probably protect him. So you got uh, you got three croakers, a bunch of bully wall regulars, and you got the royal there. That the players are going to have to fend off as the one player is trying to do the rituals, got the stone, the tribute, reading the the, the, the poem. And now when they finish that, right, you're going to double click on the Fey Arrival like it's the it's the sixth round. Boom. All this energy spreads out from the temple. The Bullywog go running, fleeing off into the swamps as they see all this light emanating from the temple. And... There she is. The Water Fae appears. This is Baba Lazaga. You've restored her to her natural self after she's gone through this centuries of this horrible ordeal, which you can read about in the uh, in the in the book uh, Fanes of Barovia. So when she appears, she tells you she's thankful. You know, she talks about all the stuff that she's done. It's just horrible. She's lived this horrible life as Baba La Saga. She stooped to Strahd's level of depravity. You know, she foresaw her abilities and station of the Fae of Barovia and, and to feel Strahd's beaten heart shredded between her teeth. I mean, she was on this vengeance to kill Strahd and you restoring her and restoring her sisters. You know, she's there finding peace and her and her sisters are going to help you and they're going to give you that staff, the heart, the broken heart to destroy finally destroy Strahd and, and free the Valley of this dark mist and this evil once and for all. Now, what the other thing I did do here in the Foundry V10 module, which is really cool they allowed me to do, is the player handout, which is the PDF, is actually in here. So you can uh, show the player the PDF handout and just uh, give this to them. You can just right click on, on this the, the feigns and just configure uh, ownership and just give this to them so they have this in game. If not, you can download it, it's free available on the website and you can share it with them, you know, by email or Discord, or the PDF. But this is the story uh, um, of the uh, of the Fey here, the whole story about what happened and, and who Babala Zaga is and all of that. It's all now built in to the new Foundry V10. It's got everything in here for the, the quest in here tell you about the quest the heart of sorrows the, the book the fanes of barovia with all the clues for you so you can you can realize that the players are figuring out the clues in the book when they get the book uh the final quest and the face speech when they all come together and materialize together and of course the player handout and then details on each of the fey where the, the green gem the location the ritual everything you need to do to run the fey quest with the battle maps i also put in some new theater of the mind maps so we've got the Forest Fay uh, location, we've got the Mountain Fay location, and the Swamp Fay location. So we've got three Theater of the Mind maps as well. Well, I really hope uh, you enjoy the V10 module exclusively available now over on Kofi. There'll be a link in the description down below if you're interested in this and the entire Foundry library or some, and supporting me and putting these PDF guides together. Become a member. There's a link in the description down below. Don't forget to smash the like button. Hit subscribe so you can be notified of the next video that I push out. Until then, may all your roles be critically successful.